this is my favorite type of segment because we get to know a special guest on the show, CJ Nofuente, two-time OCAA Player of the Year, two-time N, wait, not N, CCAA National Player of the Year, meaning she's one of the top ballers, one of the best Filipino-Canadian ballers out there. CJ Nofuente, thank you for coming here. Let's give a little clap, I guess. Thank you. Thank you can clap for yourself. Thank you. 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 All right, so... What we want to do here is we want to get to know you. You have been playing ball for a long time. You know, I come across you in Filipino leagues. But let's talk about Humber because that's where you started. Um, how was Humber that experience for you? Uh, Humber's been great. Uh, they gave me an opportunity to play basketball. Gave me a great ed education. But at the same time, playing for a great team. Uh, those girls are basically like my family now. And also the coaching staff and all the staff around Humber. They gave me basically a great community to work with and just even like people around it, people coming in to watch and supporting us. It's just, it's, a, it's an opportunity that someone can dream of. Mm -hmm. And talking about dreams, this is a perfect segue because I grabbed the video. Um, it's the video of you guys winning the, how is that? CCAA championship. Yes. And not only are you a beast in the Filipino leagues and a beast of a player scoring points and assists, but the last shot to win the game was very, very cool to watch. Let's pull that up and let's. Uh, I want you to watch this. Yeah. 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 It, wow. So 8.9 seconds. CJ has the ball there. Throw. That's oh, slow. That's slow mo. I think it's a three-point shot, making it 50-49. Let's loop that. Tell us what was going through your head here, okay? Uh, basically, okay. Uh, we were down probably almost the whole game. Last yeah. two minutes, we are down by seven. And then leading up to the last seven seconds of the game, uh, I basically had a chance to tie the game, but I missed. So I made a quick foul. And luckily, girl missed both free throws. They didn't have anyone at the line. And I looked to my coach, I looked at the scoreboard, and I seen we're still down by two. And it was one of those, I'm going to take it. If it's either she makes this, I'm taking the three, or if she misses, I'm taking the layup. And so I got the rebound. It fell right into my hands. I'm driving down the lane, thought I beat my, uh, beat my defender, and then there was another defender, and I'm just like, I can't force this. Mm -hmm. So I just gave it. I saw my, uh, my teammate out at the three, and it was one of those passes where you know what's going in. It was a great pass to a great shot. And it was just, it went in. <laughs> and what was the feeling? Like, how did you feel after? You, like, that, that's the pinnacle, I guess, of Canadian ball. Because after you win OCAA, right? Yeah. You go to Nationals. C Nationals. Yeah. So how did that feel after, like, winning it with your family? It, what was, was, that? it was great. Um, it was something that n no uh, Ontario team has ever won. And making it us the first team to ever do that, it was unbelievable. It was just, you wanted to just run off the court and just cheer and run to the stand there was so many people cheering us on but at the same time the game was still going on there was still 0.5 on the clock i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure and we couldn't cheer we couldn't celebrate yet because there was still time on the clock mm -hmm. that's funny because in the video i was watching it and all your your whole team actually was celebrating yeah. but if you look at her you, was cj like, was the on. only one going like let's play still like she knew, <laughs> she knew there, there was still, there was time, still time. time so let's talk about you playing basketball like, when did you start? When did you feel the love for the game? How did that come about? Um, it actually started when I was probably like, I don't know, ever since I could walk, you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, but even growing up around the age of four or five, I always uh, followed my uncles because I lived with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So I always followed my uncles to the basketball courts because um, we, we were big on church. So they, there'd be a lot of church runs going on. And so... My uncles would be with their friends, but then they wouldn't want to drag me along. You know those little, like, they, yeah, don't, yeah. they didn't want to drag your sibling yeah, along. Yeah. But then I would just go to my grandparents and be like, can they, can they take me? Can you tell them? Mm -hmm. So then they'd be like, oh, take her. So I'll be on the side of the court, just dribbling, trying to shoot. You know, I'm like this tall, trying to shoot on a what, uh, mm -hmm. what is it, a 10-foot net? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just like, from there, that's where it all started. If it wasn't for my grandparents, my uncle, and also Filipino League, I wouldn't be where I am today. So there's a lot of support, a lot of family that brought oh, yeah. you to where you are today. But one of the, I think one of the obstacles that I've um, read about you is that you suffered an ACL injury, right? Mm -hmm. How hard was it to keep your mindset? Like, 
Because now, now we can look back and say, look, you won a, you won a championship. <laughs> like it was worth it, right? Yeah. Let's look back on yeah. all the things that you, you know, kind of went through before that, that shot before that game, right? Uh, yeah. So even so, it was two years prior to that. Uh, it was in a home game at Humber, our fifth game in the season, and we were we we're up by probably about twenty third quarter. Um, and I tried to do a step back because late shot clock, the ball's coming to me, and I tried to do a step back and. All of a sudden, I feel a pop in my knee, and I was I went down screaming, crying, and it was the worst pain ever. And they, my the therapist said I tore my ACL, and from then you, when you hear about people tearing their ACL, it's like okay, it's done. You know, sports are sports is done. You can you can rehab, but you you're not gonna be the same. You're not gonna be the same player you were. You might not even be better. Um, but then going along the season, seeing the team struggle without me, it motivated me to become better. For them next year, the following year, and so I was able to get an early surgery date and just work my way through it. And it was what they usually say six to nine months recovery to like to play, but not at your best ability. Mm -hmm. But I came back in six playing to potentially like maybe eighty percent, which was good enough to push us to um, be contenders at nationals. Not the year we won, mm -hmm. but just to get that feeling of going to nationals. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell the audience, right, after that career-ending type of ACL injury, 2017, she scored, what was it, 55, from saying that she would never be the same player to scoring 55 <laughs> points in a game, okay? And we also, what was the 13 threes? Yeah. 55 points, 13 threes, and then later on in the month, being the, was it, all-time Humber? Uh, leading scorer. Leading scorer. Wow. So... Yeah, that was the first time I heard of you, and I was just like, <laughs> I was on my Facebook, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> someone from Humber score 53, and all just like my friends. 55. Like, 55. Every point matters. <laughs> but the thing is, if you want to watch that game, it's on YouTube, so it's not yeah. like I'm just saying it. And what was that feeling like? I don't know. I, I know how it feels to be in the zone, but in the zone for me is like maybe 20 points. But <laughs> 55 points, 13 threes, how did like... Yeah, it was, actually, understand? Um, I thought I was having a bad game from this start of our uh, warm up I was missing every shot but then leading up to the leading up to the third quarter I think I had probably what 19 points and it was one of those the game shouldn't have been close and it was just like hey it's time to break through and break this lead like push the lead and after I hit my first three it was like hey I'm feeling this mm. my team just kept feeding me the ball feeding me yeah. the ball and I was getting in the paint and one getting fouled fouled at three point line just making every shot and it was my team saw what was happening and they were working with me mm -hmm. you know if you there's a hot hand you're gonna feed it and my team noticed and then they just kept feeding me the ball so the uh, big question i guess is well, we, I we, don't, we don't too. have we don't have we a lot of time so i just want to i just yeah. want to ask this question okay go what's next um, you, you're graduated right so you know i have one more, you have year, one more year but what is next for you like what do you look playing overseas playing mm. professionally anywhere anywhere that, that any team that would want me anywhere possible WNBA overseas Philippines, maybe. Mm. Who knows? Wow. There's a lot of opportunities. Mm. Right? My only thing is that um, from having that, you know, potentially season-ending injury or career-ending injury to scoring 53, how did you, did you ever... 55, bro. sorry. Okay. How did you, you know, did you ever think that was possible? Did you ever think that that was ever going to really happen in your career, or really? No, I honestly, a lot of things you would never expect to happen. Yeah. But then, like me, I believe in God. I'm a churchgoer. And he was there pushing me. He, I believed and I had faith. And just like that, I'm here. That's great. What would you say, look into the camera, what would you say to other, I guess, female ballers that maybe have that ambition to play and maybe break your record? You <laughs> never know. What would you say to them about basketball or in life in general? Um, have, your, have role models and look up to people. But at the same time, do you. Do what you need to do. And just keep playing. You know, the, you only live once as what Drake would say. Drake, shut but up. But at the same time, have fun. 